Hello and welcome to Love at Lunch. My name is Leona Devin I'm, and I am thrilled to be here today to share a little love because sharing knowledge feels like love to me. And so today we're talking about the emotion of anguish. Last time we talked about anger and the time before we talked about anxiety. I'm going to see if I can find another A emotion for next Monday. Um, my beloved. Today, the anguish that we are talking about is the anguish where we have done something and we wish we had done it better. <laughs> this is brutal. It's one thing when life throws us a curveball and we're like, how are we going to navigate this? But when we feel like we had control over the curveball that now is hitting us fit smack dab in the teeth, it feels far worse. So we need a really profound framework to help us move through. Now, I will tell you that this is uh, a framework, <laughs> it's not a magic wand. So you still have to deal with all the feelings, you have to navigate and move through them, but I promise you it will help. So I will put a link to this framework um, below the video today after we're done and then you can download it and you can keep it. When we move through this framework, everyone know, who knows me knows I'm a journaler. I'm not just a journaler because <laughs> Leona likes journaling. Journaling is super good for our brain. So whether you call it journaling or writing down the answers, our brain integrates when we have an opportunity to create. And by writing down the answers, giving ourselves permission to just go with the answers that come out without editing, um, and we have a much better chance of understanding what's really going on. And when we can understand, our brain can help us use the strategic part of our brain to navigate tough emotions and not the part of our brain where emotions are actually produced, which is the lizard, reactive, always looking for safety or danger part. So these are gonna be really important components. So number one, as you enter into this space, think about what you could give yourself permission for. The shame which drives two really big messages, which is I'm not enough or who do you think you are, are going to be super intense. And one of the ways that we know from Brene Brown's research on shame is that when we give ourselves permission, we create a level of, un of grace and that helps us navigate through hard things. So permission to look at this situation and not judge myself so harshly, permission to dive in and feel the feels, permission to cry, permission to reach out for help as I move through this, um, and to keep going. Also some self-compassion. Everybody, everybody screws up this one big time. So um, we can be an absolute mess and still be profoundly worthy of love and connection and all the good things that we deserve. So permission, self-compassion, then we're going to dive in to, uh, <laughs> if you can memorize these eight, then bless you, your brain is just a delicious little vault. Mine, not so much. So first thing is we want to recognize when we fall, fell down. So what was it that caused that moment that maybe we stepped into something, <laughs> literally, that we wish we hadn't? So we recognize what was that face down moment? We're like, oh boy. I knew I was emotionally hooked. We talk about emotional intelligence a lot in Love at Lunch. Um, and if I've ever had the privilege of working with you or leading you through a course, we talk about it a lot. Uh, hooked by emotion means that perhaps you were hooked by anger and you felt like you were, you know, cruising down this path, got super angry and could not pull yourself out before maybe you said something that you wish you hadn't. I offloaded hurt. Offloading hurt, there's six different ways that we offload hurt. And sometimes when we are feeling hurt, we will show up with anger for somebody else. Uh, when we're actually feeling sad, um, we will start to numb out social media, shopping, chocolate. Um, again, little holy wafer of comfort. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we will say yes when we mean to say no. So just pay attention. Did I perhaps offload hurt? Was I feeling a feeling? Uh, for me, often it's sadness or grief, but it will show up as anger and I'll lash out at somebody else. Or I'll numb out in social media, trying not to feel it. Uh, sometimes with busyness or something else. Perfectionism is also common. So I offloaded hurt. Maybe you skipped that part, maybe you didn't. I'm an offloader. 
the story I made up, really important. With the lack of data, our brain will always make up a story because as soon as we make a story that fits, then our brain gets a little dopamine hit, a little cookie to the brain. It's like, oh, dang, Leona, you're really good. You made up a story and you feel a sense of relief. We need to look at that story and we need to actually combat it and go, is that even true? That's the story I'm making up. We need to be aware. So, uh, so far, for those of you who are just joining, moving through hard things that we regret, at recognizing your face down moment where you feel like you screwed up, uh, you knew you were hooked by emotion. Maybe you felt something physically sweaty, cold, uh, or you started to feel anger and you couldn't back up out of that. You may have offloaded hurt. Maybe something else was painful or you felt an emotion you're not comfortable being with and you either numb, uh, lash out at somebody else, say yes when you mean to say no, um, stockpile it so you start to feel it in your body. Maybe get a headache or a stomach ache or um, long-term other issues can show up. Uh, tight muscles, um, uh, um, tight jaw, wishing you had said something and didn't. Um, the story you make up, understand what story that you're making up about this situation. Lack of data will always help us make up a story. Number five, what more did I need to learn and understand about the story or the people in it? This is really important. We need to be able to combat those stories that our brain make up with a lack of data with what might possibly be true. And so we wanna have a generous interpretation of ourselves and the other person. I think empathy plays a role here also and self-compassion, being kind to ourselves that does not excuse behavior uh, where we might have hurt uh, somebody or said something we wish we didn't or did something we wish we didn't, but we can still use that lens of compassion and empathy um, to think generously of the situation. What did I need to look at in myself? Was I avoiding vulnerability by lashing out at somebody um, instead of saying, hey, this situation makes me feel overwhelming me sad and, um, and so I need to be with that? Um, instead of lashing out at somebody uh, with an angry remark or a smart remark. Um, <laughs> by smart, I do not mean super smart. I mean a snarky little smart comeback. Uh, sometimes the smart remark is to zip it when you're feeling ticked off. Number seven, some of the emotions I had to rumble with. Rumble just means you got to muck around in this. Um, when we are in a shame storm and we feel like we've messed up, it is an intensely painful feeling. Um, it's a very old uh, feeling as in we have been feeling that feeling of shame for centuries. It's built into our lizard brain and when we feel shame, it is the fear of disconnection. So when we were tribal communities, we would be fear that we would get hucked out of the tribe and we would starve to death. So it activates that part of the brain that says you are in danger because you screwed up. And one of the ways back, self-compassion, permission, reaching out to a friend and using a framework that works. And this is one of those. So some of the emotions I have to be with that I feel uncomfortable with, anxiety, boundaries, criticism, forgiveness, grief, guilt, some of the things that I really struggle with is disappointing people, and that brings up a whole bunch of different emotions. Um, it's a common shame trigger, and I need to understand how to navigate that. And then what's the gap from where I am now to creating a new ending in this situation? We always, regardless of how poorly we have, may have reacted to a situation, we always want to think, how will I integrate what I'm learning? And this framework helps us to kind of pull back the blinds on what feels just dark and messy in order to come back to integrity with ourselves. In this case, when we've done something that we feel like is outside of integrity, uh, that means that we need to be able to forgive ourselves. And how in order to rise from this, what does integrity look like? So what are those values that are going to guide the way and what behaviors are those going to inform? So that might mean saying sorry, making amends, understanding how I get triggered and caught off guard by certain emotional charges so that I can do better the next time. Understanding and integrating old stories that may have shown up in this tough situation. Um, and then what are my key learnings and what will I do as a result? 
And sometimes that doing is an internal piece and not necessarily an external piece. But oftentimes, if we perhaps have done something that we are in anguish over, there may be something that we need to make amends for. And I'm telling you, there may seem like no joy in this framework, but when we work through we give ourselves some grace, the other party some grace, thinking generously of them, and come back to our values, understanding what set us off in the first place, where were we trying to avoid vulnerability, what feelings did we have a hard time being with, and then we step into our values. I promise you, the magic that you will receive on the other side of this is a spark of joy that says to you, living in your truth and doing what matters, even when the chips are down and even when you've messed up and you can come back around, that's where we get a spark of joy. And that joy spot is worth it. So my friends, if you find yourself in a place of anguish today, my heart is absolutely with you. So enter into this place, use this framework first. What permission can you give yourself to soften the shoulds? How can you be self-compassionate as you look through this lens and through this framework? Um, and um, how can you move forward from into a place of integrity and do what is right? And know, above all, that even though we all mess up, we are all infinitely worthy of love and belonging. So much love to you, wherever you are today. Um, I will post the link that you can get access to this framework, sign up for it, um, and um, then you yourself can have this framework to work through if you are in a place of struggle and anguish today. Love you.